Mary McGlasson. I've been using OER for uh, Linda. When did I do those books? 14 years ago, something like 13 or 14 years ago. And just like Fabio, I was offended when the cost of the books surpassed the tuition for the class. Like mm -hmm. it just didn't sit right. So we tried lots of things and that's just where I landed. And now the rest of our group is also using OER, but a different platform. So all the econ classes now are the low cost, no cost. Ma'am, they all are. I had put up a slide. If anybody's interested, you certainly don't have to watch these, but one of them was sort of my hybrid teachings, which is what drove me to OER. I just couldn't figure out how to teach hybrid and I started building things to enable me to teach hybrid courses. And then there's a shorter video that's just touring you through one of my iBooks if you were ever interested in that. We were looking at some of our courses and really trying to move in the education program. It gives students a break from some of the costs. The child development textbook, we call that our bread and butter course too. We are offering five and six and sometimes seven sections of it a semester. And it was just outrageously expensive. The textbook was $240. And we kind of networked with a group from California and with some of our colleagues at Mesa Community College. And I think that's the key to is networking, sharing resources, collaborating, building. Sometimes you've got, like Marie said, a variety of resources from different authors, creating that bridge between or that flow between. So really knowing what the materials are and building those connections filling in where there's gaps and then taking off where you don't need to. So we consistently ask students like, how is the organization of the content? How's the comprehension level? I read it through reading checkers. There's a lot of free reading checkers that you can put a paragraph or two into and it will tell you the level to assure that we're, we're hitting at the right level. You don't want something that's you know not complex enough or that's too complex. So making sure that the, the level is there and then that the material's engaging. You know, I like that we can manipulate it. Sometimes I would ask students, if you have an image to throw in there, we're studying child development, some had great pictures that they could throw up there on the content or add that. So it kind of became their collaborative space for adding images to help display some of the content, what they liked best, what they liked least, and then suggestions for improvement. So we did a really thorough survey after like the first couple of weeks, made some modifications how to organize it. Um, and then we asked students at the end, and I know this is kind of a leading question, but what did you do with that $240 that you didn't have to spend on a textbook? And we were so surprised to have students say things like I paid for groceries or rent, or you know, it enabled me to actually take another class that I couldn't have taken before. And some students are actually searching for courses by no or low cost. So the first semester that we did it, we anticipated this saved us $37,500 for students one semester. And of course, there's there, we're always trying to make it better and more interactive, but I just think the savings to students, again, not compromising quality, but putting students first, and that's, that's $37,000. I mean, one semester is just astronomical. Ooh.